Keep out of this cart, right? We don't need you. Stop her, somebody. Don't let her see this. as her father and her brother were. Well, how is she? She's resting. She's in deep shock. I believe I could have made that diagnosis. Now, don't take your moral indignity out on me, Ben. I don't mean to, Paul. Just what I think of people like that Mrs. Buford, one of the so-called leaders of our town. Give her and... these. One every four hours. The only thing else I can prescribe for her is time. How about prescribing a little kindness and affection? About the kindest thing that could happen to Lita Malvet is for her to get out of Virginia City as soon as possible. Give the people a chance to forget about the two men her father and brother murdered. But when she leaves, she ought to go of her own free will, not because somebody threw rocks at her and drove her out. You may be right, Ben. Goodbye. Trying to scare this horse half to death. Can I get him paying down? Yeah, cut out the infernal shooting. Well, I was just practicing, older brother. Well, then put it back in your holster before I have to take it away from you and keep it until you grow up. Well, you think you can? Now, what's all this racket? Little Jones, next time you pull a stunt like that, I'm going to put you up on that little sorrel. Your baby son here is playing at stage robber. Well, quiet down the lot of you. That girl in there needs a rest. Oh, look, Pop, we're going to start guarding those mine payroll shipments. We And keep quiet about that, too. Well, who's going to hear me out here? Now, never mind who's going... I can't say you're welcome on the Ponderosa, Renton. I figured I wouldn't be. And why are you here? Ask about Lita, that's all. I'll tell her you asked about her. I'd sure like to see you, Mr. Cartwright. I don't think that would be best. I appreciate what you've done for her, Mr. Cartwright. I, I just stopped by to say thanks and see how she was, that's all. Paul, I can't do no harm. It might do some good. Come on, then. Take his horse. I needed you. I tried to find you. I come as soon as I could get here, Lita. I've been working at a ranch over at Washoe. What am I going to do, Clay? I want to. I want to go away from Virginia City. Running away not going to help anything. I found that out. But, but the talk, Clay, facing them every day. As long as you know the talk is lies, it can't hurt you, Lita. First thing you gotta do is forget the talk. Ain't that right, Mr. Cartwright? Well, the, uh, the doctor did say she needed a lot of rest. Sure. I'll be around any time you need me, Lita. You know that.
Now, you get a lot of rest, just like the doctor said. Good to see you, Joe. You and me used to have a lot of good times together, huh? Yeah, we did. Thanks. Thanks, all of you. That's all we need, somebody like Clay Renton snooping around. I don't think he's snooping around, Adam. I think he meant what he said. You know, he's just a little bit older than I am, and he's already got two prison terms behind him. Yes, and about eight or ten more ahead of him, more than likely. Paul, don't you think maybe you ought to talk to her about him? Now, son, there's one thing that a man can't do, and that's tell a woman who to love and who not to love. Yeah, I reckon not. You boys have nothing to do? Come on, Well, what's in your mind? The girl? She's been here three days now. What are you gonna do about her? Well, what do you want me to do, throw her out while that mob in Virginia City is still in a lynching mood? We have an obligation to ourselves, too. Such as? Guarding the payroll shipments. Look, whether we like it or not, the only associates leaders ever had in our life have been outlaws. And I just don't like the idea of somebody like Clay Renton hanging around the Ponderosa. Mm. I suppose you're right. Why don't you do something for a change and rustle me up something neat, huh? Who took care of you before I was around? Where do you think you've been? If I thought it was any of your business, I'd tell you. I warned you for the last time, Clay. I'm running this shebang all the way. Yeah, you're running it just fine. You have us hold up an empty stage, Malvet and his boy kill a guard in a drive and get hung for it. What'd we get out of that job, Spence? It's been a long time since we picked up any money, boss. We came here to get a slice of that mine payroll money. I don't care if it takes six months. We ain't gonna go off half-cocked and get our necks stretched like Malvet and the boy did. They ain't carrying that payroll on the stages anymore, but they're still getting it through. You've got no idea how they're doing it, huh? I suppose you have. If I was running this outfit, I'd find out. Well, you ain't running it. I kind of go along with your thinking, kid. But you ought to have better sense than try to outdraw Spence. Thanks for taking care of my chickens, Hoss. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. I, I plumb enjoyed it. Me and them chickens got to calling each other by first name. Oh, I almost forgot. I, I sold some of your eggs to Mr. Buford, and here's the money. Oh, ma'am, there ain't no cause for that. Nobody's ever been as good to me as you folks have. Well, we, uh, we'd better get this little lady home. Bye, Miss Lee. It's best to be home. Oh, I don't mean I don't appreciate all of it. Oh, I understand, Lita. I'll go in with you, see that everything oh, is all right. Oh, no, I, I mean, I left it so quick and all. I guess it looks pretty awful, don't it? Alita, you do believe that I want to help you every way I can, don't you? You and the boys think maybe I ought to go away from here, don't you? I think it would be best. Mr. Cartwright, I haven't got any place to go. Do you have any plans, then? Well, I've got my chickens. Mr. Buford buys all my eggs. I can make a living. I've been doing it for three years now. And I never took a penny of the money my dad and brother stole. You've got to believe that, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I, I do believe you, Lita, but, you know, there are some folks who won't. Well, then I'll, I'll make them believe it. I'll stand up and face them and, and make them know it's true. Well, if that's what you think is best for you to do, Lita, I'll do everything I can to help you. It's what I have to do, Mr. Cartwright. 
play was right. And in a way, it won't do any good. Welcome home, Lita. Clay, what are you doing here? Who's got a better right? What's the matter? A week of those high and mighty cut rights make you too good for me? It's not that, Clay. What is it? It's just that... that you take me for granted. Take you for granted? You think I thought of anything but you every day of those three years I was in jail? I'm sorry, Clay. Let, let's not talk about it, no? Let's just remember that it's over now and... and we can get a fresh start on things. You bet we will. We'll have lots of good times together, too. It's, it's more than that, Clay. It's... it's... Having people look up to you, and it's walking down the street knowing that nobody's talking about you behind your back. Wait a minute. What do those Cartwrights do to you, anyway? They treated me like a lady. <laughs> well, honey, ain't you one? Come here. It's been a long time, Lita. Don't let those Cartwrights give you any fancy ideas. They ain't like us. They treated me good. But I'm your kind. And don't you ever forget it. for all the decorations. You always were a sharp trader, Harvey. <laughs> So you brought me some more eggs. There are six dozen there. You can count them. Well, now, I, I could take your word for it. I wouldn't have to count them. They'd look awful pretty on you, Lita. I've never seen any that pretty before. You're just your size, too. If you'll finish counting them, I'll take my pay for the eggs now. You ought to have these shoes, Lita. I can't afford them. If you'll give me the pay, Mr. Buford. You can afford them, Lita. You got a pair of shoes, Lita? I told you I couldn't afford them. I just want to be nice and friendly. I could come out to your cabin of an evening once in a while and, and pick up the eggs. <laughs> She came at me like a tiger. I caught her trying to steal. These! Dirty liar. Stop it! Honey, they tried to rob me. I saw it all. She's a thief, just like the rest of her family. Take uh, me home, Clay. Please take me home. Come on. We just gonna let him go? You got your shoes back, didn't you? 
Honey, it's like I told you, she tried to rob me. I said I saw it all, didn't I? Interested in a fifty thousand dollar load of firewood? I'd be interested in your keeping quiet about it. Any trouble? Not a bit. No. Well, there's apt to be. If those outlaws are still around, they find out how we're getting the payroll across the Ponderosa. Now we got to figure out something different for next week. Listen, Adam. Little Joe had a real good idea. Here's what we're going to do. He's going to put on a beard, see? And then we're going to get in the covered wagon and come out here like we're looking for land. Yeah, see, then we then we put him in a in a real nice bonnet and a, and a print dress. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did I ever get tangled up with you two? <laughs> You're just plain lucky, older brother. Well, here it is. $50,000 in cold minute cash. Well, what I could do with that at the big charity bazaar next week. Well, now, I wouldn't worry about it too much, because you're not going to be at the charity bazaar. Yeah, why not? You'll be right here on one of these payroll wagons. You get in trouble there, it'll be constructive trouble. You get in trouble in town, it'll be just plain trouble. Hey, Pa, Adam says I can't go to the bazaar. That's right, son. But neither can Adam. He's going to be riding the wagon right alongside you. Oh, now, Pa, Hoss and I will represent the Cartwright family at the bazaar. I'm trustworthy. All right, come on, let's unload the wagon. Why don't you listen to me? Because I don't like it. It wouldn't hurt to listen, Spence. Can't be no worse off than we are now. All right, so you found out how it's done. What are you going to do about it? What's the matter, Spence? You gone yellow? I've gone smart. I got to wait for the right time. These nags of ours ain't had a beta vote in a month. What are you going to do? Get these horses of ours ready by next Wednesday? I'm going to buy fresh horses. With what? Money. Money out of the safe in Harvey Buford's store. <laughs> With half of Virginia City looking over your shoulder. It won't be. I take time to think things out. Now, listen. There's a bazaar starting up in a couple of days. Everything shuts down except the saloons. Nah. It'd be good to have some money to go on, Spence. No! Why? Because you didn't think of it? Because I don't want no part of a cheap two-bit holdup. I came here after big money, and that's what I'm going to get. I told you before, boy. You think too small. You've been living on egg money too long. We're going to do things my way this time, Spence. What's the little boy trying to do? Grow up to man size? <laughs> he ain't trying. He just did. I guess I just don't know how to say this right, Lita. But there in Buford's store, when he accused you, I knew it then. I can't stand to see you face it alone anymore. I can't stand to be alone. I love you, Lita. I love you and I need you. Oh, Clay. Oh. I waited so long to hear somebody say that. I know folks around here are going to talk against me, but... But if I... I knew you was waiting, I... Oh, I will, Clay. I promise you I will. I'd go away for a while and get a little money ahead. Oh, it isn't important, Clay. Yes, it is, honey. It's important to a man. A man likes to feel like he's taking care of his wife. I'll get it. 
Of course you will. I hope you won't change your mind, Lita. Like if those Cartwrights start talking against me. They don't like me coming out here to see you. But I do, Clay. That's all that matters. Hi, Miss Leland. I just brought that chicken feed into town for you. Show big things doing in Virginia City today. They're getting ready for that bizarre meeting. Got the streets all decorated and the booze all set up. <laughs> Say, Miss Leland, you you sure do look pretty, ma'am. Oh, you like it? I made it myself. Sure enough? Oh, it's, it's mighty pretty, ma'am. It's the first time I ever tried. <laughs> really? Listen, you keep that up, and you're liable to take first place at that dressmaking contest at the bazaar one of these days. Oh, Hoss, do you think so? Do you really think so? Well, ma'am, like you said, it is your first one, and, and I reckon I reckon it takes, a, it takes a lot of practice to really so good. Hoss, when I was sick, when I was over at your house, you said that I could talk to you any time, tell you anything I wanted to. Yes, ma'am, and I meant it, too. Well, I want to show you something. I have to tell you. It's in here. Sit down, Hoss. Yes, sir. Now close your eyes. Yes, sir. Hey, that's a wedding dress, ain't it, Miss Lita? Yes, it's a wedding dress. I made it all myself. It's my wedding dress. Y you made it for your hope chest. I heard about gals making, making stuff for their hope chest. It sure is pretty, Miss Lita. I'm going to enter it in the contest, Hoss, and I'm going to be married in it, in the best church in Virginia City. And I'm going to walk down the main street of that town and let everybody look at me, and I'll be so proud, and everybody will say, there goes Mrs. Clay Retton. Huh? You and Clay Retton? He asked me, Hoss. I wasn't supposed to say nothing, but I'd been just bursting inside with wanting to tell somebody about it. Uh, Clay's going to get a job, a real fine job. Yes, sir. Uh, it ain't like I hadn't known him for a long time. No, no. I know he's had trouble, but then so have I. I want to start all over again, and so does Clay. Don't you see? That's what makes it so good, Hoss. Yes, sir. I reckon I do. Ain't you gonna wish me happiness, Hoss? Yes, sir, Miss Lita. I wish you all the happiness in the world. You and Clay both. Bye, Miss Lita. like your bazaar is going to be a great success. Well, I've worked very hard at it. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Nice to see you. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I want to thank you for your generous contribution. Oh, not at all, not at all. Good cause. <laughs> oh, and uh, Mr. Cartwright, I was wondering if you would... Uh... If I would judge the dressmaking contest again this year? No, Mr. Buford, never, never again. You ladies take this way too serious for me. But thank you very much for asking. Much obliged. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, ma'am. Goodbye.
Look, let's get over to the last hour and see what the boys are up to, eh? Oh, don't you think it's a little bit early to start celebrating? Early? What, for a couple of young bucks like us? <laughs> $50. A lousy $50. There should be more. I thought there'd be more. You thought. We risk getting our next threats for $50. Take it easy. I'll figure out something. Harvey? Harvey? Don't tell me you're going to open up today. Oh, I have to get something for my wife. Boyd, it's been sort of up to you and me to head up things around here. Something wrong, Harvey? Well, what do you think we ought to do, Harvey? I don't know. My wife thinks she ought to be run out of town. Me and the rest of the committee will back you up. You know that, Harvey. Spence was right about you. You do think small. Harry! Let's get out of here. pick this up for my wife. I didn't figure on you being here today. Turn around. Huh? Turn around, walk. for the dressmaking contest. Now, now, ladies, if you can get your men folks quieted down. Now, ladies. Mrs. Buford. Now, ladies, as you know. I got an entry. <laughs> what is it, child? I made a dress. I went to enter it. I was afraid I'd be late. Clay was supposed to come by and get me, but he plum forgot. I guess that's just like a man, though. It's kind of crumpled, but I stuck by all the rules, Miss Buford. Uh, I bought the material right here in town, like the rules say. I traded eggs for it. You can ask your husband, Mrs. Buford. And, and it ain't no boughten pattern, either. I made it my own self. It's my wedding dress, Mrs. Buford. I guess that was just an accident, Mrs. Buford. I guess you just couldn't help it. I said, I want to enter my wedding dress in the contest. The entries are closed. To everybody, Mrs. Buford, or just to me? If you had been on time, I would have been glad to accept your entry. You're a liar, Mrs. Buford, and everybody here knows it. I know I ought to hate you, but I don't. I just feel sorry for you. Yeah, 
That's really nice. I wish the boys could be here with us. Yeah, did you see the expression on old Adam's face when you told him he couldn't come? <laughs> <laughs> What happened? I just found out where I belonged, that's all. Now, now, wait a minute, Lita. For what? sawmill, spread them out, and cut up all the trails between here and the Ponderosa. I'll get some men together here to follow out the Gold Hill and the Peabine Springs roads. I'll meet you at the Ponderosa later. Yes, sir. You've all got good ropes, Ben. We know how to use them. Yes, I guess you would, Boyd. You've had practice. Things in town. Ugly. Boss said you sent the uh, posse up toward Peabine. A lynch mob would be more like it. Well, I doubt if they'll find anything they can lynch out that way. You picked up a trail then. I figured you would. Yeah, there must have been three others besides Clay Renton. What makes you so sure it was Clay Renton? Well, the horse said that. That Harvey Buford had mentioned Clay's name. I'm not going to condemn a man until I have a lot more to go on than that. You ever talk to Lita? Not yet. We found where four men had been camped. It looked like they'd been there for some time. Followed a trail up along Manzanita Ridge, and we ran out of daylight. They headed up to the lake then, huh? Well, three of them are, anyway. You boys follow on along the ridge, then circle back to the Malbec place. Sure you want to go along? I'm sure. Well, I guess we lost him. I doubt it. I wouldn't do that, boys. Just leave them pea shooters right where they are and be sensible about this. It was Clay Renton who beat up that storekeeper. I swear it was. Now, the safe was robbed. You got the money with you? You know what was in that safe? Fifty dollars. That's what was in it. Cartwright, listen to me. Let, let me explain it. Oh, you'll have all kinds of time to explain. What do you want to do with them, Adam? I'll take them back to town where there's a jail to hold them. And we'll swing back around Lita's place like Pa told us. Fifty dollars. Was it worth it, boys? Riding in here just now like something had happened. I used to see my own father and brother ride in here like that. I felt bad about not being here to take you to the bazaar like I promised. I just wanted to see you and explain. Maybe I rode a little too hard. Clay, I heard about it. Everybody did. About what? Harvey Buford. You, Mr. Cartwright. I'm alone. Oh, I, uh, I came here because I'd like to talk to you, uh, Lita, about Clay. 
You've already made up your mind about him, haven't you? No, I haven't made up my mind about yes, anything. you have. All of you have. Somebody gives Harvey Buford the beating he's always deserved, and, and everybody blames Clay. Clay wasn't even in town. Well, if Clay wasn't in town, he can prove that, then there's nothing to worry about. But he'll have to prove it, won't he? Well, shouldn't he? Why should he? Why should he get down on his hands and knees and come crawling to you? Is it because his name is Renton and not Cartwright? Now, you know that isn't so. Why is everybody getting so excited? Every day a man gets a beating in Virginia City and nobody turns a head. Lita, this is more than a beating. Harvey Buford's store was robbed. Harvey Buford is dead. Can you understand what I said? A man has been killed. My father and my brother were killed, too. And I know who did it. A whole town full of your kind of people is guilty of that crime. Why don't you go knock on their doors in the middle of the night? Clay Renton is suspected of murder. Clay is not guilty. If you're so sure of that, then what are we fighting about? He's all alone against all the rest of you, and I know how that feels. I know you do. And I want to help you. I can't turn against him, Mr. Cartwright, not when he needs me most. I'm not asking you to turn against him. I'm asking you not to turn against yourself. What is it you want of me? If Clay comes here, don't get into trouble by trying to protect him. If he comes and asks me, I'll have to give him my help. Then you'd be putting yourself on the opposite side of the fence from everybody. And I guess I would. To be on the side where I belong. I'm a Malvette, and there's one thing the Malvette women could always be proud of. They always stood up for the men they loved. Thank you for helping me find my own place, Mr. Cartwright. All right, you can come out now, Clay. He's gone. Yeah, I guess he has. Did you think I'd lie to you? No, I can trust you, Lita. I was proud of the way you talked up to him. We gotta get out of here. You got a gunny sack or something? We'll need a few supplies. Start filling up. I'll keep an eye on the window. I didn't know Harvey Buford was dead. He got what he deserved. I think of him putting his hands on you. Mr. Cartwright said the store was robbed. I heard him say that. Did you hear him say it, or did you already know it? How could I know it? I told you I wasn't in town, didn't I? Throw some grub in that sack. We got a long, hard ride ahead of us. What are we running from, Clay? That's a fine question coming from you. You heard old man Cartwright, didn't you? He's already made up his mind I'm guilty. But if you're not... Well, what difference does that make in this town? You think they'd listen to me or you? Honey, look, 
Don't you know how I've dreamed about this, you and me, getting a fresh start? We can't do it here. They won't give us a chance. Hurry up now. the other three, took him back to town. There's no doubt about Clay's being guilty, pal. Oh, I guess I knew it all along. So does the rest of the town now. Does anybody know where you were headed? That well, wouldn't be very hard to figure out, would it? We've got to get Clay out of there before that mob gets here. We'll have another lynching in our hands. Well, Hawson and old Joe around back. We could rush him. No, we can't. The leader's in there with him. Clay, I have to know the truth. Did you rob Buford's store? Why don't you stop deviling me about it? You didn't answer me. You gotta tell me the truth. Did you rob Buford's store? Did you steal that pair of shoes? Let's move it a little closer. out there. Renton! Clay, my boys and I are out here alone. Now, if you come out, I promise you we'll see you get a fair deal. Clay, no! You think you can trust those Cartwrights? We've got to trust somebody. Can't you see that? You think they're out there alone? Listen. Wait a minute, wait a minute, listen to me. The girl's in there with them. We want her too, Cartwright. We'll get out of here, honey. Just do what I say. Out the back way. We'll both start shooting at the same time. Then what, Clay? Leave that to me. We're gonna have a good life together. We're gonna enjoy some of the good things other people have. Everything we've always wanted. Let's go. Everything, Clay? You don't have to wear homemade dresses, either. Not with me, you won't. I'm going to buy you the finest wedding dress you ever had. You did kill Harvey Buford, didn't you? Come on, Lita, let's go. I'm not going, Clay. What? You couldn't turn on me, Lita. Now put away that gun. Honey, what are you trying to do? Put that gun away, Clay. I want to do what is right, Mr. Cartwright. There'll be no deals with that woman, Cartwright. What do you want to do, Lita? If I bring Clay out without his gun, will you promise me that he won't be lynched? I promise, Lita. How do you expect to keep that promise, Cartwright? You'll have to shoot me in the back to make me break it. That was smart of you, leader. Old man Cartwright went for it. They wouldn't dare shoot as long as you're with me. Look, I'll put the gun in my boot, huh? We're gonna make a great team, honey, you and me. 
We're going to have a good life together. They're not going to be able to stop us, none of them. You wait and see. As soon as I get clear of the cabin, I'll make a break for a horse, okay? Let's go. Lita kept her end of the bargain. I'll use my gun if I have to. Look in his boot. I would have got one of those payrolls away from you, Cartwright. I had it all figured out. That's what I was after. Just one big one. Just one big one. Clay. You had a chance at something much bigger than a payroll. Tell the girl if there's anything we can do. Is there anything you want to do? I would like her to know how sorry I am. How very, very sorry. Then why don't you tell her that, Mrs. Buford? Take your bags in for you, mister. The name is Kyle. Frederick Kyle. Oh, yes, Mr. Kyle. We have your reservation. Thank you. By the way, would you happen to know a family here by the name of Cartwright? Who on the Washoe doesn't? How would I get in touch with them? That will be pretty easy. Adam and little Joe are in town right now, picking up supplies. By little Joe, would you mean Joseph Francis Cartwright? Jo <laughs> you call him that, you better be ready to duck. He's right inside. Thank you. <laughs> Joseph Francis. <laughs> See you five and raise your five. Ah, uh, see that? Raise you fight. Tens over fives. Mm-hmm. Three sixes. Maybe he'll do better next time, kid. Oh, he needs a little luck. He'd be better off with a miracle. You care to explain that, mister? That routine of yours is older than the wheel. And your partner here gives bad signals. It's all right, simmer down, young fella. It's a good thing to learn. You learned it cheap. Give him his money. I can fight my own battles. There's not going to be any battles. That's right. Give him his money. You think carrying one wing's going to keep me from mopping the floor with you? Pick any reason you like. That was 
pretty nice work, mister. How much of this belongs to you? I got about $70 in here. Uh, 70. Uh-uh. Not all of it. When a man learns a lesson, he ought to pay for it. I'm Joe Cartwright. Kyle. Frederick Kyle. So I sure would like to repay you somehow. I haven't had a decent meal since I left Kansas City. I could sure use a good steak. Well, I think I can fix you up Ponderosa style. Put that thing away. What do you want to do, shoot the man that's going to give us a money tree? What? I've seen that one before, back in Kansas. Can't be two men like him. Who is he? One-armed trouble. More trouble than this town's ever seen. I'd like to tell you again how grateful I am to you for helping little Joe. <laughs> for a meal like this, I'd do it every day. You know, it's a pity you didn't get here a few days earlier. Then maybe little Joe might have had some money left over to spend the next time he goes into town. You've been cheated before, little Joe? They don't have to cheat him to get his money, Mr. Kyle. He's the worst poker player on the whole comps. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to make up that deficit in spending money. You see, I'm in the business of exporting gold and silver bullion. You plan to buy silver ore here in Virginia City, Mr. Carl? My intention's precisely. Well, you've certainly come to the right place, then. We're sitting right on top of a whole mountain of it here. So I understand. But I must get to the various men who control that mountain of silver to interest them in my proposition. Well, I, I know them all, Mr. Kyle. I'd be more than happy to show you around. Well, I appreciate your kind offer, little Joe. Well, if you're looking for help in high finance, Mr. Kyle, I'm afraid you done picked on the wrong cart right. <laughs> How do you mean? Well, you see, little Joe's, so. Uh, full of that hot southern blood that he can't get very interested in cold cash. Now, on the other hand, Adam over there, he's from New England, and he's just got a natural feeling for the jingle of cash. And how about you, Haas? Well, sir, I, I reckon I'm sort of in between. Haas's mother and I were on our way out west when Haas was born, out in the prairie, just west of the Missouri. You weren't alone, Haas. Many good men were born on the prairie. Yes, sir. I just don't understand it. We're all from the same country here, and, and yet there's still all this talk about North and South. Where's the dividing line? I'd say that the dividing line was in people's minds. Well, that, that puts me in the middle, all right, because I ain't got no leaning either way. You know, that's the trouble with you, Horst. Now, you take older brother over here. He's from way up north. Me, I'm from way down south in Dixie. Now, now, just blow the bugle when you want the war started. <laughs> all right, now. We all have our roots in the right here in the Ponderosa now. <laughs> Sometimes a man's roots and responsibilities go deeper than where he lives. Isn't that sort of idea rather stale and old-fashioned, Mr. Kyle? When we came out west, we left that behind. Can you ever leave behind an idea or an ideology? At any rate, little Joe, I most appreciate your kind offer of help. Well, that's certainly the least we can do for you, Mr. Kyle. Thank you. Are you sure you won't have a cigar? <laughs> Thank you, no. I don't want anything to spoil the memory of that steak. Well, I'll tell Hobson what you said. He'll be awfully pleased. So it's ranches like this where all that good beef comes from. <laughs> Mr. Kyle, I know it's an overly used expression, but you do sound like a city fella. Not by choice. But the cities are where one finds the houses of finance. Yes. Yes, you're right there. Sit down, Mr. Kyle. Thank you. Used to travel a great deal to the, to the cities. Yes. You still travel, I suppose? St. Louis, New Orleans, New York, nice. all over. Nice cities. Yes. What about this, uh, this trouble that seems to be brewing between the states? Not trouble, Mr. Cartwright. It's a prelude to war. Civil war. Now, do you really think it'll come to that, Mr. Kyle? There's already talk that some of the states are seceding from the Union. I hope we'll be spared all that grief out here. Now, where did you say you were from, Mr. Kyle? I don't believe I did say. But I'm from Kansas. And that's right in the middle of everything. 
Well, I think I'll turn in. Good night, gentlemen. I do appreciate your hospitality, sir. Our pleasure, Mr. Kyle. Our pleasure. See you in the morning, Mr. Kyle. Express riders coming in like a scalded cat. Just don't seem to me like people get as excited as they used to, Paul, when the pony rider comes to town. Well, you know, us people don't like to hear bad news. It's been getting worse all the time. Well, let's pick up a paper. You're alive. <laughs> Hey, 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 come on, hold it. Wait, wait, wait. I'll kill that dirty Yankee. I'll kill him dead. Hey, hold on. What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on. This dirty red said the North's not even fit to be in the same union. Yeah, yeah it is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's Virginia City. There's neither North nor South. Well, maybe all that's going to change pretty soon. Well, now, that might be true, but right now, you're just going to simmer down a little bit. That one of the papers is coming down? Yes, it is. Well, there won't be no truth in it. Just poison. That paper comes from New York. Let's hear what it has to say, Mr. Cartwright. We don't want to hear no reading from a northern paper. That right? Yes. What's the matter with you, Rebs? You afraid to hear the truth? Just hold on. If my Paul wants to read the paper, I, I reckon that's what he's going to do. Now, you just simmer down a little bit. Well, the, uh, the news, uh, been mostly about one thing. That's, uh, that's a speech that uh, Mr. Lincoln made last month in Springfield. I guess uh, what, he, what he wanted to say will be found right in the end of it here. This is the, uh, the agitation has not only not ceased, but augmented. In my opinion, he says, it will not cease until a crisis shall have been reached and passed. And he says, a house. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Begging your pardon, Mr. Cartwright. What's all that mean? Well, Mr. Lincoln is saying that people come together because of the things they have in common, like. Uh, well, like friendship and love, and, and uh, I guess it means that when they get so blinded by the personal beliefs that hate creeps in, well, then violence can't be too far behind. Oh, that's nothing but northern lies. It ain't lies, neither. A nation ain't a nation if the states don't stick together. Wait a minute, Luke. What if a state don't want to stick together? And we fight to make them stick together. For those of you who would like to have the news read from a southern paper, I have here the Charleston Journal. Mr. Lincoln's speech has been hailed as a southern victory. It is generally acknowledged that the first ten lines of that speech have already defeated his bid for election. Here was Mr. Lincoln's reply to that opinion. If it is decreed that I should go down because of this speech, then let me go down linked to the truth. Let me die in advocacy of what is just and right. You trying to tell us that a southern paper would write a thing like that? If you can read, see for yourself. The South would never praise the thinking of a man like Abe Lincoln. A man who honestly knows what he believes and has courage enough to act on it is a man deserving of praise from all men. Now, we could have cut your heart right out, Mr. Cobb. We wouldn't want to do that. We just wanted to show you how handy we'd be to have around. What do you want? Well. Our meeting before was a, a little informal. We thought we'd like to make it more proper. My name's Regis, and this is Gorman. What do you want? Well, I guess you could say we came around to enlist. Enlist? 
What are you talking about? Why, the cause. What else? I remember you from Kansas, Mr. Kyle. Frederick Kyle, leader of the free state movement in the South. Oh, making stirring speeches all of them down the state. Swearing to die for the cause if you had to. Well, you were mighty persuasive, Mr. Kyle. So much so that I, I've been thinking about you ever since. So you can see how pleased I was to see you'd landed right here in Virginia City. Come in. Well, now, like I say, being a, a convert to the cause, I just naturally wanted to join up. And Gorman here, he always goes along with me. Goes along with you in what? Well, now, since Virginia City's sitting on a pile of silver, we thought maybe you were after some of it to help run the war. Any particular war? <laughs> well, let's say the one that's about to start, it, it don't much matter one way or the other. It don't make much difference to you, do it? Well, now, Mr. Kyle, it's your war, not ours. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. All right. Talk. We heard some of the mine owners might not want to go along. So we thought uh, maybe we'd lean on them a little. Or maybe just keep you from getting hung with the highest tree. Now, we could be your own private little army, Mr. Kyle, for just, uh, oh, say, uh, $5,000. Well, what do you say, Mr. Kyle? For the good of the cause? Talk to me about the cause. You dirty it every time the words come out of your mouth. <laughs> you, you laugh again and I'll kill you. Gorman! You hold it, you hear? Now look, Mr. Carr, we didn't come in to fight. We just want to talk business. That's better. We talk business, not causes. Now we understand each other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we understand. Get out. When I need you, I'll send for you. Now, you can count on us, Mr. Carr. Have seen little Joe around anywhere? He was out making the rounds with that Kyle fella. Yeah, but he should have been home by now. Where's Kyle? He's up in his room, alone. One arm of his don't slow him down much. I told you, he's trouble, like the witch's town has never seen. What was that you said about him being a money tree? He will be, just as long as we all ride the same track. I thought you said Kyle was in his room alone. Who are they? Name's Regis and Gorman. They got a mean streak runs clean through. I hear they got out of jail just last week. Now, what would a man like Kyle be doing with their kind? And just what is Mr. Kyle's kind, Adam? Are you sure? Well, now, you got to admit, he plays his business close to his vest. Oh, well, somebody ought to know. Well, my guess would be little Joe. Mr. Kyle seemed to want to get friendly with him right from the start. What do you mean? Well, he was asking about little Joe the minute he got off the stage. Thanks, Tom. Come on, Hunter. Gentlemen, this drink's on me. Well, thank you, neighbor. I'm Adam Cartwright. Card right. Well, ain't we stepping high on the wheat? My name's Regis. This is Gorman. What about your other friend? What friend are you talking about? Oh, the uh, man with the money tree, Mr. Frederick Kyle. You know about Kyle? Easy, Joe. Here's a toast. What does he want with my brother? Like I said, here's a toast to uh, small dogs and little old ladies. Well, I don't know about Mr. Kyle, but I know about you, both of you. And what I know, I don't like. Well, we don't much care whether you like us or not, Mr. Cartwright. 
You just stay out of our way. Your way, Mr. Kyle's way. Well, let's say him and us are on the same side now. Come on now, you'll be on any side that paid your price. You want to make us a better offer? No. No, I just want to be on the opposite side. got that branding to do in the crest section. Well, he should be riding in pretty soon, I guess. He was with Kyle again today. Well, I told him he could go. What is it, Adam? I met two gentlemen today, a Mr. Regis and a Mr. Gorman. We had a toast together. Yes? You sweep better things off the streets, but they also happen to be friends of Mr. Fred Kyle. What's on your mind? Kyle didn't meet little Joe by accident. He was asking for him the minute he got off that stage. Who told you that? Tom Madigan at the International House. Mr. Hennessy, you sure you won't have a drink? I uh, don't drink, Mr. Kyle. Well, it's a pity. It's one of the few indulgences a man has left. What did you want to see me about, Mr. Kyle? Well, I'm prepared to offer you a firm contract. I want to buy all the silver your mine produces. I already have a contract with my brokers in San Francisco. I know. But I'm willing to pay you a third more. I said I had a contract, Mr. Kyle. Say, Mr. Hennessy, aren't you passing up a pretty good deal? I think you'd best keep out of this, little Joe. Well, Mr. Kyle's a friend of mine. You didn't even hear him out. Forget it, son. I don't want to forget it. What's the matter with the offer? The man who's making it. I've heard of you, Kyle. I understand you have pronounced Southern sympathies. Well, my sympathies lie entirely in the other direction. Good day, sir. What did he mean, bringing politics into this? I, I thought it was a straight business deal. And so it is. We'll forget about him. Well, little Joe, today just about did it. Most of the mine owners I'm after have been invited to next week's meeting. I'm very grateful to you for your help. All I did was make introductions. Which was plenty. Out here, it pays to have a cart right on your side. How do you mean? Well, when I knew I was coming out here, I'd heard, of course, of the Cartwright family of the Ponderosa. So I, I checked to see if it was the same family. The same family? Mm hmm I knew your mother, little Joe, back in New Orleans, a long time ago. She was a very beautiful, a very gracious woman. In many ways, you're much like her. So I thought perhaps you'd like to have this. Where did you get it? Doesn't matter. I've had it many, many years. She was a very beautiful woman, your mother. She was. I want to thank you for giving me this. Nothing at all, sir. Well, tomorrow morning, bright and early, we'll, uh, we'll get back to the rest of the names on that list. Sure, little Joe. Sure. Thanks again. And don't worry any about Mr. Hennessy. I, I think he'll come around. I think he will. So long, Mr. Kyle. Hello, Tom. Evening, Ben. Say, I was glad to hear your wife is feeling so much better. I'm looking for Mr. Kyle. I'm afraid he's not in his room. You're a friend of Mr. Kyle's? Well, I, I know him. I see. Well, then, we have that in common. My name is Lily Van Cleet. Well, my name is Ben Cartwright. I believe you must be a stranger at Virginia City. Just passing through. Are you a friend of Frederick Kyle's? Why? Well, he's a very interesting man. I'd like to know more about him. 
Well, then I suggest you ask him. Yes, I, I suppose I should. You must be tired after your journey. May I offer you some refreshment? Thank you. You say you're just passing through. I'm going to California. The West is such a wonderful land. And it used to be. Used to be? All the trouble back east, it's seeping west. It doesn't belong out here. Hate and misunderstanding have no place anywhere, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, uh, coffee? Please. Two coffees, please. Well, I, I hope things will be different out in California for you and your husband. You are married, aren't you? I, I was once. And you? Yes, I, uh, I have a ranch. I live there with my three boys. Three sons? How wonderful. <laughs> what are their names? Well, the oldest is Adam. The uh, middle boy, we call him Horse. Well, if you'd see him, you'd know exactly why. He's a pretty big fellow. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, the youngest, the youngest and most impressionable, we call him Little Joe. I named my son Joseph, too. Well, if he favors you, ma'am, he's a fine-looking boy. It's past tense now, Mr. Cartwright. Pardon me? Joseph is dead. Oh, I'm sorry. What is happening in Virginia City happened in the East over a year ago. Joseph and his father were accidentally embroiled in a street fight. I lost them both that night. You are a very fortunate man, Mr. Cartwright. Be thankful for that. Hello, Fred. I told Mr. Cartwright we were friends, and I was just passing through and decided to stop over and say hello. Mr. Cartwright? Mrs. Van Cleet? Kyle, I'd like to talk to you for a moment, please. Wait, please. When you came into town, you were looking for my son, Joseph. Why? I had a photograph of his mother. I thought he'd like to have it. Where did you get it? I knew his mother. You don't believe me, Mr. Cartwright? She's gone now, so that doesn't matter anymore. But my sons do. Now, I don't know what your intentions are, Mr. Kyle, nor what you're seeking to achieve here in Virginia City. But don't try to see little Joe again. with thine hair the eyes of day. Kiss her till she be wearied out. Then wander o'er city and sea and land. You see? I still remember Shelley. Well, I should. You've read him to me often enough. You know, a few more years and you might have made a literate man out of me. Speaking of years, this is a sort of a special one for us. A man who can remember Shelley surely can remember his 20th wedding anniversary. I do. I do remember. 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> and you introduce yourself to Cartwright as a friend. Whatever it is you're here for, Frederick, I didn't want to spoil it. There's nothing you can do to spoil it. The daughter of a northern senator meets a lot of people. 
I don't think the cause of a southern sympathizer would be enhanced in case someone were to find out I was his wife. Have you changed that much, Lily? That you could be interested in the cause of a southern sympathizer? I still believe what I have always been taught to believe. No, Frederick. My beliefs haven't changed. Neither has my love for you. I was hoping that after whatever it is you must do here, we could go to California together. We could be happy there. It's a new land. I heard that the day I arrived in Virginia City. But now I mean to take it into the camp of the Confederacy. Oh, Fred. What fools we are. Our son loses his life, you lose an arm. Then we lose each other. Why? Why? Our boy did not lose his life. They took it. He was murdered. Murdered by a group of those self-righteous northern hypocrites that your father so skillfully represents. There were secessionists in that group that night, too. We don't know which side it was that killed him. I guess we all had a part in killing him. Fred, this may be our last chance. You said that you believed what you were always taught to believe. Well, that's true with most of us. A man does what he has to do. And you used to quote another part of Shelley. A glorious people vibrated again. The lightning of nations. The day that all this is over, I shall come to you. You're forgetting something, Mr. Hennessy. You don't drink. I've been waiting for you, Kyle. You have? Why? I know why you've come to Virginia City. A number of the other mine owners have told me about your purpose here. And what is my purpose, as you put it? To force the silver mines into financing the rebellious cause of the South. Yes. Yes, that is my purpose. Well, you won't get away with it. You think you can stop me, little man? I'm going to leave for Washington in the morning. Warn the proper authorities about what you're doing. Don't you try it, little man. I'm warning you. Don't you try it. Regis. Yes, Mr. Carr? Have a drink. Bartender. Hey, Regis. The stage is about ready to leave. And I figured it's getting to be about that time. The fellow over there. One in the gray hat. It's about as Yankee as a man can get. Only good Yankees, dead Yankee. You know, I think that stage is going to run into a barrel of bad luck.
My foreman found the bodies just before dark. Since, since you and the lady were acquainted, I thought you'd want to know. How did it happen? Someone placed a boulder on a blind curb. The driver didn't have a chance to stop the stage from going over the cliff. Who did it? Must have been two of them. There were footprints all around. Kyle. Who was she? You must have known her pretty well. Why don't you tell us who she was? What are you hiding, Mr. Kyle? I am not trying to hide anything. She was a person I once knew. You believe that, don't you? I don't believe you, Kyle. Who are you and what do you really want here in Virginia City? Look, what's got into you, Adam? You have no right to question Mr. Kyle like that. Haven't I? Well, he's got you pretty well fooled, hasn't he? Fool about what? He hasn't got me fooled about anything. Tell him, Kyle. Tell him the truth. Stop it. Stop it. What's the matter with you? What are we doing? Shouting over the dead, fighting like animals? Come on, both of you. I'm sorry, Kyle. I... We shouldn't have behaved this way. I told you, Ben. She was a person I once knew. There's two more. Well, evening, Mr. Kyle. I suppose you heard about the accident that Yankee leaving on the morning stage. I heard. Well, then maybe you'd be pleasure to buy us a drink. Put your guns on the bar. In the back room. Kyle, there are definite signs. This was a planned crash, all right. But what made you think those men were the murderers? Well, Mr. Kyle? I think we can answer that, Sheriff. Austin and I just checked up on the road. That slide was done deliberate. We found a pick they used to pry the boulder off onto the road with. It's got Gorman's initials burned there in a the handle. Huh. Well, that proves those two men are guilty. But Mr. Kyle never answered the question. How do you know those men are guilty? What difference does it make as long as they're the men that did it? But it does make a difference, doesn't it, Mr. Kyle? What were those men guilty of, murder or just acting on your instruction? Oh, uh, that's ridiculous. What reason would he have to do a thing like this? Well, maybe I can give you a clue. Which one did you want killed, Kyle, the man or the woman? Look at him. You've been riding Mr. Kyle ever since you met him. Now, stay out of it. Brother against brother, how dare you, either of you. Pop. 
Paul. Hmm. Oh. Little Joe came in about 20 minutes ago. Well, the maverick said... finally got home, did he? Well, right now the three of you are going to have a talking to. We'll put an end to this nonsense once and for all. Little Joe! Paul. Little Joe, come in here! Paul. Paul, he, he came, but he didn't stay. What do you mean, he didn't stay? He just came to pick up a few things, Pa. He's gonna stay in town for a while. Well, why didn't you stop him? I planned to. Paul, Adam says he's gonna go too. Adam! Adam, wait a minute. Now. Now, Adam, before you... It's political trouble, it's a madness, Pa. Suddenly something screams at you inside and you find yourself saying things you don't mean, things you don't even believe. Tell little Joe I wanted him to know that. Try to make him understand. These things that are packed here, what's this for? Where do you think you're going? New England ought to be mighty pretty this time of year. I think I'd like to see it again. Now, Adam, you can't be serious. Use your head. Oh, Adam, come on. Horse, things can't be the same between us anymore. What are you talking about? What can't be the same? Why can't they well, be the same? I just can't, Pa. Adam. Adam! Adam! There's no other way, Pa. Can't you see? No, I can't see. I'm not gonna stand by and watch my family flick away like rust off a wheel. Well, use your head, Pa, not your heart. Can't you see the damage is already done? It's gotta be little Joe or me. And he needs you more than I do. Adam. I don't want you to go. You think it's what I want, Pa? Or even what little Joe wants? This thing has gone so far now, there's just no stopping it. You can't have two different points of view in the same house, Pa. It just won't work, and that's all there is to it. Adam, please. Oh, pa, leave me alone, will you? Adam! All that newspaper you was reading the other day in the saloon about what Mr. Lincoln said about a house divided can't stand? I reckon he's talking about folks like us. No. Not us, boss. Not us. Since I have already met and talked with most of you gentlemen, the main purpose of this meeting is to iron out any further questions that might have occurred to you. You've guaranteed to pay us well above the price we're getting in San Francisco for our silver ore. That's right. How do you expect to do this, sir? Those I represent need hard money, gold or silver. So to get it, they're willing to pay more in drafts of trade. Drafts of trade? For what, Mr. Cobb? Easily marketable items, such as cotton, tobacco, Gentlemen, I'd like to talk to Mr. Carl in private. Will you excuse us? I asked if you will excuse us. I have something important to discuss with Mr. Carl. Suppose you'd like me to go too, huh, Pa? You're a man now. After you hear what I have to say, you can do as you wish. Miss Kyle, this, uh, this scheme of yours with the mine owners, how does it work? The silver bullion and the letters of trade which you give in return are channeled through some foreign country, and the bullion ends up creating a war chest for the Confederacy. Isn't that it? You're a very astute man, Mr. Cartwright. A very astute man. No, just a father. Something which probably isn't very important to you. Allow me to decide for myself what is important to me. You're a man of purpose, aren't you, Mr. Kyle? Everything for what you believe. Is that so bad? Or don't you believe in anything? I believe in my sons. Today I lost two of them. I should think you'd know better than anyone else alive how much that hurts. Me? Why me? That woman. 
That woman, Kyle, who was she? You leave her out of it. Can you? That night in my front yard, when you were looking at what remained of her, I could feel the pain in the air. You loved her, didn't you? You loved her, and you were willing to let her go without so much as a goodbye. I don't want to kill you, Cartwright, but I could change my mind. Who was she, Kyle? Every man has something he'll live for and die for. I want to find out what it is with you. How far will you go? How much are you willing to sacrifice, Kyle? Cartwright, I'm warning you. You let me alone. I talked to that woman. I saw the way she looked at you. I saw the way she held your arm as you walked up the hotel stairs. And then later, I saw the way you were holding her cape, the cape that only a few hours before had warmed her flesh. Stop it, Ben! You hear me? Stop it! Was she nothing more than a party girl from Carson City? It isn't fair, Ben. You're not fair. You said that you... you wouldn't take sides, that this wasn't your fight. You made it my fight, Kyle. She was your wife, wasn't she? Yes. Yes, she was my wife. First your son, then your wife. Nothing must interfere with your mission. Nothing. Nothing. I will stop at nothing to ensure the success of my cause. Yes, I believe that. You will see. This is only the beginning. No sacrifice will be too great. There will be countless others, men like myself, and worse, brother against brother, father against son. And when it's over, what a waste it will all have been. What a useless, damnable waste. brother, father against son. Do you really think it'll come to that? I don't know. I do know that a tree has many roots and they run in many directions. But it has only one tap root. And this is where yours is. I think I know that now. Be a lot further along than this by now, Adam. Don't worry, I'll get there. Well, maybe you will, maybe you won't. First, I think we ought to get something settled. Now, just just hear me out. Just sit and listen to me. Now, as long as I can remember, you uh, you always stayed up later than we did because you were well, you were older than we were. You always helped Pa settle the problems of the Ponderosa because you were grown up. Well, that just isn't going to set with me anymore. Not, not if Horse and I have to run the ranch by ourselves. That lake sure gets under your skin, don't it? Yeah, it sure does. Let's go home. <laughs>
I just about got it figured. Not many men are so privileged as we are to see a new civilization born before our own eyes. There are times in the streets of Virginia City when I question the use of the word civilization. It is always that way with the new hop sing. A diamond, before it is polished, seems no more than a clot of dirt. Is this the American way to toast on an American occasion? To your son on his 18th birthday. To my son Jimmy's American birthday. To the joining of the past and the present. To create a finer future. You have honored my house, and now there is much to do. You are fortunate to know the Cartwright family so well, Hop Singh. It pleases me to know that here in America, the affection and respect of the sons for the father is as strong as it is in the land of our ancestors. The Cartwrights have great respect for you, my uncle, and admiration for your son. I am happy that the younger sons will honor us with their presence at the birthday party. And do not worry, Hop Singh. Your friend Hoss will be fed as well as if you yourself did the cooking. We're good together, Billy Boy. We're gonna have to clean a lot more of this dirt out of here before Virginia City is a fit place to live. Little Joe, hmm? is it sure enough true we're gonna have bird's nest for dinner at Jimmy Chang's birthday party? Well, that's what Adam told us. I ain't for sure I'm gonna like that. Oh, well, it's something to eat. You'll like it all right. I'm sick. Paul, Adam, come on here, quick! I'm sick. What happened to you, boy? What happened to you, boy? Can you talk up, thing? Looks like he's been in a pretty bad fight. Yeah. Paul, Paul, let me help him in the house. You forget about it. Hopsing all right. It's Chinese business only. What do you mean by that, Paul? You don't think he's tangled up in one of them Tong things we heard about, do you? No, I don't, son. The Tong is a protective organization composed of civilized people. I wonder how much more this has been going on. A lot of it. Particularly in the California gold mines. Didn't think anybody would spread over the mountains. Well, why would anybody want to do a thing like this? Because Hop Singh is Chinese. That's the craziest thing I ever heard of, Paul. I feel like going in there and tearing that town apart board by board. No, you won't, son. You'll go to Jimmy Chang's birthday party tomorrow, just as you planned. Well, I suppose we just forget about the fact that somebody beat up on Hop Singh. We're not going to forget about it, but we're not going to stir up more trouble for the Chinese than they already have. You sure you got enough money? Oh, yes, sir, Paul. We, we done paid for Jimmy Chang's present. We're just going to go pick it up. All right. Well, we'll see you later. Come on. What was it you wanted, Lee Chang? Oh, today is birthday of my son. Well, ain't that nice. I <laughs> uh, would like to buy 
18 small American flag. Uh -huh. I, uh, you're plumb out of them flags, ain't you, Hammond? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I forgot. I don't have any American flags, Chang. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? I don't have any. You'll have to go some other place. Uh, thank you. I will try Campbell's on C Street. You don't have none either. And neither does anybody else in town. Mr. Vernon, Mr. Adam, it would seem my unworthy nephew feeds food to bring good health. It would seem Hop Singh feeds my brother horse a few extra servings, too. <laughs> well, there's a big day in your life, Chang. You'd be mighty proud of that boy of yours. Mr. Cartwright, could I ask you a question, please? Well, of course. Anything you want, you know that. There are customs of your people I do not understand. I'd wish for my son an American birthday party. I wouldn't worry about it. Just give him a cake with candles. Oh, yes. It must be candles and not flags. Well, what do you mean, Jane? I had thought to put American flags on the cake, but I understand it is not permitted. Who says so? Oh, it's no matter. Chang, did Hammond refuse to sell you American flags to put on Jimmy's cake? I did not understand. I do not wish trouble. Ben, it's good to see you. And what can I do for my favorite customers? We'd like to buy some American flags. I don't have any of them little ones, man. And how did you know we wanted some of those little ones? Yeah, maybe we wanted a great big one. Well, do you? You run in the store now, Jesse? No. No, I just take care of my own affairs, that's all. Well, then stay out of ours. You pack a grudge a long time, Adam. Well, how about it, Hammond? I'm just sure we don't have none. Now, why don't you take a nice, hard look? We're right here. Well, here's some of them. <laughs> I didn't know I had any left. Let's see, that's three, four, five, six, seven. How many of them did you need? Eighteen. They're to be put on a birthday cake. Oh. There's a few extra. That'll be a dollar. Thank you. Adam, you shouldn't let Jesse Tips get under your skin that way. I can't help it. Nothing but a cattle thief and a hired gun, and yet he walks around loose. He'll trap himself in time. And the full one. Well, this town's getting pretty hard up for somebody to run for mayor, isn't it? Adam, is Jesse Tibbs still foreman of that ranch that Andy Fulmer bought out South of Carson? As far as I know. Mm. Yeah, Hop Singh, the business with the flags with Lee Chang. Yeah, that sounds just about like the kind of tactics that Fulmer would use. First the Irish and now the Chinese. America for the Americans. That's a pretty tired platform. Adam, do me a favor. Will you take these flags over to Lee Chang? Tell him that Hammond just misunderstood him. What are you up to? Uh, somebody I want to talk to. Come in. Ah, and Cartwright, I'm rightly honored. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit, Mr. Cartwright? You don't have to go through any of the formalities, Mr. Fulmer. We've known each other for some time. Ah. 
What school did you get that from? School of Hard Knocks, same one you went to, Ben. Only I don't call myself a lawyer. Folks get in trouble, they come to me for advice. Ain't nothing in the law that says I can't charge a fee for helping them. Hmm. Now, just what did you have on your mind, Ben? Andy, I understand you're fixing to run for mayor. That's right. Andy, what's your platform? Virginia City for Virginia City. Short, sweet, and to the point. You like that? Well, it depends on what it means. It means Virginia City belongs to the folks that made it what it is. It means we don't want outsiders. Well, now, what's your definition of an outsider, Andy? <laughs> well, now, Ben, you, you live outside the city, and you can't vote for me anyhow, even if you would. But I'll be glad to spell it out for you anyway. It means our town's being overrun by foreigners who are willing to work for nothing. And they're taking the bread and butter out of the mouths of folks like us who built this country. Now, by foreigners, Andy, who do you mean? The, uh, the Irish, or the, the Welsh, or the Chinese? Now, before you start giving me any of that high-flown talk about prejudice, you just stop and remember this camp's full of those same Irishmen and Welshmen and Cornishmen. And those are the very people I mean to protect. I wasn't going to give you any high-flown talk about prejudice, Andy. I just wanted to know where you stood. Yeah. Does that mean you're against me, Ben? Well, Andy, it means that if I find out that you or any of your boys had anything to do with beating up my cook, I'll tie a rope around you and I'll drag you up and down Main Street. Now, Ben, like I said before, you don't live in this city. And you can't vote for me no how. So why don't you just stay out of this campaign? I guess you just invited me in, Andy. Jimmy Chang, just when I got a surprise birthday present right out the open, we would have to run into it. I didn't expect to see you till tonight. You are coming to the party, aren't you? Uh, sure, we're coming, Jimmy. What's the matter, Hoss? Uh, we really gonna eat bird's nest? My father said he felt the same way about the first piece of apple pie you ever saw. <laughs> see you later. I gotta get to the stable and get to work. Take it easy, Jimmy. He's a good kid. Yeah. Made up his mind to go to college, and he'll do it, too. You reckon he knew this was his birthday present? If he couldn't figure that out, he sure has no sense going to college. Hey, good looking. You know better than to say a thing like that in public. You didn't seem to mind it so much last night. Why, Billy Wheeler, I wasn't even with you last night. Then who were you with, Sally? Tommy Gaines or Ned Wilkins or, or the Pierce kid? Or maybe him? What if I was? I didn't know you was making fun. I'd slap your mouth. Let go of me. Suppose I tell your daddy what you just said. What do you think old J.R. did to you, huh? <laughs> now, you just be nice, and I won't tell. Let go of her. Let go of her! Why don't you try and make me? Boy, you just made the biggest mistake of your life. The biggest mistake you'll ever make. Jimmy! Let me look at that cut. That's all right, Miss Sally. Leave me alone. All I did was bathe your face. A girl would do that for anyone. Yes, anyone. I didn't mean it the way it sounded. That's all right. I'm used to it. Here, I'll put some more water on it. Sally. Father. Get into the house. But, Father. Did you hear me? Why, what have I done? 
You've disgraced my name, flouting yourself in front of this heathen. I was just helping Jimmy. Billy Wheeler hit him. And I thank Billy Wheeler for that. Father, how can you say that? Jimmy didn't do anything. You get into the house before I thrash you. I'm not afraid of you, Father. I haven't done anything wrong. Every time I look at a boy, you see evil. Shame! <laughs> Sally! You keep away from her. You shouldn't have done that, Mr. Ridley. Oh, I... oh Father, no! No! Father, no! <laughs> You've killed her. No. 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 I told you it was the biggest mistake you ever made. Boy, I sure told you. I wouldn't be too worried if I was you, Lee Chang, about Jimmy. He'll be around in a minute. Now, old man Ridley probably gave him a few extra chores to do. You know, Mr. Ridley, he's tougher than nails. Oh, Jimmy not mine. He work hard. He do what Mr. Ridley tell him. What do you think, Os? I don't know. That boy's so dang anxious to make his college money, he's done forgot his own birthday party. Yeah, he's almost an hour late. Jimmy! Jimmy! Jimmy, what happened? Pop Shane, get some water and some towels, quick. What is it, my son? They were chasing me. Who was? I had to fight them off, Hoss. They wanted to kill me. Well, why? What did you do? Little Joe. I didn't do anything. Well, something must have happened. Sally Ridley is dead. Her father shot her. It was an accident. They think I killed her. Now, look, Jimmy, I want you to tell me the whole story right from the very beginning. It was an accident, Joe. I liked Sally. I wouldn't ever hurt her. We know he's in there. Send him out. Send him out or we're coming in to get him. Somebody will get hurt. Just keep calm. Ain't nobody gonna hurt that boy. We'll handle this thing proper. Little Joe, you come cover me. First man that tries to come in this house is gonna have to climb over me. We're not looking for any fight. We want the boy is all. Well, you ain't getting him. He killed somebody. And he's gonna get what's coming to him. Now, that's a bit hasty, Billy. Suppose we give him a choice. Either we take the boy in jail, or we get a rope. What about it? You wait here. Will they take my son? No, Lee Chang. If anybody does any taking around here, it's going to be little Joe and me. But you believe, Jimmy. Look, don't worry, Lee Chang. Sheriff Halstead's a fair and honest man. He'll know the truth when he hears it. Father, in America, a man is innocent until proven guilty. Isn't that right, Hoss? That's right, Jimmy. Go on. Let's go, Hoss. Hopsing, Adam's going to stop by for us. Tell him we're down at the jail. You let him have him. We could have strung him up. Billy, Billy, Billy. Don't you remember what Fulmer said? What we do is let it boil. We just let it boil. Now, you've told me the whole truth. You sure you've left nothing out, son? I've told it just the way it happened. Well, I'm inclined to believe him. How many other folks will is the question. Well, I believe them. I've known Jimmy and his family a long time. They're good people. Sure, they're good people. But that doesn't tip the scales. Not with some who have political ambitions. You mean Andy Fulmer? Yeah. 
He's been waiting for this kind of thing to happen ever since he declared for mayor. Come on, boy. Jimmy? Everything's gonna be all right. This is for your own protection, Jimmy. You'll be better off here than you will at home. I understand, Sheriff. See, Jimmy, this doesn't mean that, that you're guilty. Even an innocent man, if he's suspected of murder, can't be allowed to roam the streets. I know. You'll be all right here. All right, Billy, send him in. Mr. Ridley. Andy. Won't you sit down? All of our sympathies are with you, Mr. Ridley. We all want you to know how deeply we feel for you in this, this hour of your great loss. Thank you, Andy. It's a tragedy, Mr. Ridley. It's a real tragedy. And if we hadn't let the bars down in the first place, a thing like this couldn't ever have happened. Now, you know me, Mr. Ridley. I speak my mind plain. Your daughter went out with lots of American boys, didn't she? Sure she did, pretty little thing like her. And did any of those American boys ever act any way other than decent with her? Of course not. Would an American boy have shot her down in cold blood? There's something I think you should know. That boy didn't kill my daughter. It was an accident. I had the gun. The gun went off. That boy didn't kill my daughter, Andy. I did. Now, you just sit there, Mr. Ridley. You had a very trying day. Jesse, haven't you got some work to do? Sure. Sure, Andy. You know, sometimes when a man suffers a great tragedy, it can affect his mind. You understand that, don't you, Mr. Ridley? Yes, yes, I understand that. And in his grief, he he might forget things or or even imagine things that never really happened. Yes, yes, that's true. Well, I'm sorry to say this, old friend, but I see signs of that in you. In your eagerness to do what's right, you're willing to shoulder all the blame for Sally's death. Well, shouldn't I, Andy? Now, now let's face the truth. Didn't that boy, that uh, James Chang, didn't he provoke whatever caused Sally's death? As the Lord is my judge, that boy caused Sally to die. Yes, and our city's overrun with these undesirables, and that breeds the sort of thing that happened to you. And every decent citizen in this town wants to see that that don't never happen again. Now, ain't that right, Mr. Ridley? Yes, yes, Andy. All right, then. Now let you and me sit down and examine what's really right for Virginia City. You asked me to order members of our town to fight, if need be, to protect your son. My son has not killed anyone. He has committed but one crime. He is Chinese. Is James Chang Chinese? Has he not given up the ways of his ancestors? Has he not taken the dress and the custom of another people? He is ambitious. He desires to educate himself in this new land. He knows that one day the Chinese will take their place alongside other people who have come from many other places to make this great country. Young eyes can see great distances, and risk is the privilege of youth. Your son has accepted the new ways, and with this, he has accepted the risk. He is my son, and they talk in the streets of killing him. It is written, it is better to sacrifice one lamb than to cause the slaughter of the entire flock. Some men will fight, even to save a lamb. Order, order, please. 
Now, I don't want to have to remind you folks, this is an official inquest, and I expect order. Continue, Mr. Wheeler. Like I said, I seen this Chinese boy carrying on with Sally Ridley. So naturally, I went and told her father. You know the rest. Now, Your Honor, aren't we taking an awful lot for granted here? Now, surely, Your Honor. Ben Cartwright's been around long enough to know the facts when he hears them. But this is not a trial, Andy. It's an inquest. Is that all, boy? Well, ain't that enough, Your Honor? Don't get smart with me, son. Now, you just get down and let's have the next witness. Miss Amanda Ridley. Now, Amanda, just tell us in your own words what happened last night. Jimmy Chang killed my sister. Order, order in the court, please. Order, order, please. Amanda, we're not passing judgment here. We're just trying to get the facts. Well, what did you expect? Everybody in town knows what kind of a girl my sister was. Always flaunting herself, fluffing her hair and mincing around boys. <laughs> What's the matter with her? She's jealous of her own sister. Um, please, Amanda. I know how hard this must be for you. But all we want to hear is what you saw. Well, I heard a shot. I ran to the stable. There was Jimmy Chang bending over my sister. There was a gun next to him. My poor father was standing there, just staring. And the gun was by Jimmy Chang? It was right by him, right where he dropped it. Now, Your Honor, now, how do we know that was Jimmy Chang's gun? Now, ben, Who saw him drop it there? Now, ben, you're not trying to tell us that gun just fell out of the sky, are you? <laughs> ben Cartwright, I'm not going to put up with any more of your outbursts. All right, Amanda, that's all. Mr. Ridley, will you take the stand? Mr. Ridley, do you feel the testimony you've heard here is substantial of the way it happened? As the Lord is my witness, that boy caused the death of my daughter. Thank you, Mr. Ridley. You missed up, Doc. Jimmy Chang, stand up. It is the finding of this inquiry that you, Jimmy Chang, stand trial for the murder of Tyler Ridley. Inquest adjourned. I sure don't want to miss that trial. Well, hanging for sure, won't they, Mr. Fulmer? Oh, that's hard to tell. Jury trial, sometimes you just can't depend on a jury. Like I told you boys before, when I take over this town, I want it clean. Maybe, maybe we ought to see to it there ain't no trial, boss. Jesse, I sure like the way you think. We own obligation to this town, boys. And he's right. We're all merchants. We all earn our living here. If we let the Chinese take over, our property will be worthless. I never spoke truer words, Cyrus. That's my way of thinking exactly. And if it wasn't my way of thinking, I wouldn't be running for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, Andy. I ain't a man to jump into things, you know. Well, you ain't a man to stand by and watch your own house burn down without tossing on a pail of water either, are you, Cyrus? Uh -huh. We let that Chinaman get away with killing that white girl. It's just the same as saying we don't even care what happens to our own wives and daughters. Well, well, what do you think we ought to do, Annie? I think we ought to put a stop to it right now. Well, Looks like you're a little off your game today, little Joe. over at Hammond's store. I don't like the looks of it. Andy Fulmer in the height of his glory. So-called cause and a hot-headed audience to listen to his ranting. What do you think it'll come to, Paul? I don't know. 
But if Boomer can fire up that crowd enough, they'll sure enough try to break Jimmy out of jail. Oh, don't you think we can hold him off, Paul? No, I've got no right to ask you Cartwrights to get mixed up in this thing. You got no help either, have you? Uh, you want to get rid of me, Sheriff. You're going to have to throw me out. Jimmy Chang's a friend of mine. Well, Sheriff? Well, I, I won't lie and say that I'm not pleased, but... Well, to make this thing legal, like, I, I'd better swear you all in as deputies. That's good. Always did want to wear one of them deputy badges anyhow. Like you were right. I don't think there's any more doubt about it, Sheriff. Look, there's only one way to avoid trouble, and that's by getting that boy out of town fast. But I can't rightly do that, Ben. Well, you can't rightly let them come in and lynch him either, can you? Ben, Jimmy Chang has been indicted for murder. That's my sworn duty to uphold the law, and it's also the sworn duty of you and your sons now. What are we supposed to do, sit here and wait? That's the way it is. Look, Pa, even if we get Jimmy out, we gotta get him past those men. Yeah, I suppose nothing would make Fuma happier than to kill Jimmy Chang while attempting to break jail. Now, look, Ray, there's uh, no law that says a deputy can't walk out of here, is there? No, there isn't. If you boys want to change your mind, I can release you from any obligations. No, that's not what I meant. I just don't like the idea of sitting around here while Andy Fulmer calls every turn. What's on your mind, son? Well, Pa, I can't help thinking about Amanda and the way she behaved on the witness stand. Now, I've known her a long time. I just don't believe she's turned that bitter. You think you might want to talk to her? I'd like to try. Huh. It's worth a chance. Maybe through her you could break down Ridley's story. I don't like the idea of you going out there, though. No, horse and I could cover him, Pa. Oh, that'll be playing right in the former's hands. And there'd be three less guns in here for him to worry about. I'll get through all right, Pa. Well, I wasn't thinking of you getting through, Adam. I was thinking of you getting back in. You know, don't sell Fulmer short. He's got Ridley on his side, and he's going to do everything in his power to keep him there. Well, I'm going to risk it. Hmm. All right, Adam. What's the matter, Cartwright? The stink of that woman killer get too thick for you in there? You get out of my way. You sure are proud of you, Adam. Ain't no law says we can't stand out here in the street. Yeah, why are you Cartwright so nervous? We ain't doing nothing. Well, just keep on doing it. Supposed to be all right. My father isn't home. Well, it's really you I wanted to talk to, Amanda. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. Well, all of us used to have some mighty good times in this house. We haven't entertained since Mother died. Seven years. Must get kind of lonely for you sometimes. I had obligations, and I assumed those obligations. Have to be at such a high price. Do you think it's been easy keeping the household together with Mother gone? No, I don't. I, I watched my own father do it for years. Yes, but Sally did everything she could to make things difficult. <laughs> yeah, Pa had his moments with all of us, too. She had no respect for anything, not for me or for my father. Look, Amanda, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Life hasn't passed you by. Why can't you, Cartwrights, mind your own business and let us mind ours? Because it happens to be everybody's business when a boy's life's at stake. You can stand there and say that to me when my sister's been murdered. 
What do you expect me to do? Go over there to Jimmy Chang and tell him it was all a big mistake? If that's what it was, yes. Jimmy Chang said he didn't have a gun. He said it was an accident. Now, look, Amanda, I've always admired you because you had the courage to stand up for what you thought was right. Sally was just exactly the way you used to be, no more, no less. You don't need to pretend with me, Amanda. Oh. Adam, I, I've been so alone. What should I do? Tell the truth. What are you doing in my house, Cartwright? There's no woman safe in this town. How dare you persecute my daughter? It's not your daughter that's being persecuted. There's a young boy over in that jail that's just about to face a lynch mob. That boy's a murderer and a heathen. He's been indicted for his crime. Indicted but not convicted. Or don't you think Jimmy Chang deserves a fair trial? James Chang will have a fair trial. Not unless you tell Andy Fulmer that's what you want him to have. Oh, Mr. Fulmer's an honorable man. He doesn't need me to tell him what to do. What's the matter, Mr. Ridley? You're afraid to face up to Andy Fulmer and the principles you value so highly? I fear no man. Well, then talk to him. I'll go with you, Father. He got to stand trial anyway. He ain't even no citizen. That's right. We're gonna let those Cartwrights tell us how to run our town. They don't live in Virginia City. And this town is for us that lives here, for us Americans. That's right. There are only three Cartwrights in there. Adam left. And we'll see to it he don't get back in again. I say rush the jail. Sheriff Halstead will be on our side when he sees we mean business. What are you up to, Cartwright? Stopped for a walk with some friends of mine. What's the matter, Jesse? You seem nervous. Mr. Ridley, is, is Adam trying to force you to do something against your will? No man forces me against my will. I want to talk with Mr. Fulman. You wanted to talk to me, J.R.? I've got to talk to you about everything. About those people out there. Why, certainly, J.R. Not a man in this town can't speak to me whenever he wants to. You come right on in. Miss Amanda? Let's uh, step into my private office. We can talk freely there. Well, I'll wait out here. Won't you sit down, Amanda? Thank you. JR? Now then. What was it you wanted to say to me, JR? I want those people out there to know the truth. I want to tell them what I told you this morning. And what did you tell me this morning, J.R.? Why, that Jimmy Chang is innocent. That my daughter's death was an accident. And what did I say then, Mr. Ridley? I just don't remember. Didn't I say that I wanted to help you? Didn't I say that the people of Virginia City were behind you 100%? Did you see all those people out there in that street? Why do you think they're there? They're there because they're your friends, J.R., just as I'm your friend. Because we both believe in the same principles. We believe in honesty and decency and the American way. Now, ain't that right, Mr. Ridley? Yes, I suppose so. Father, you... Now, you don't suppose. You know. Those people are out there because they're your friends. They're out there to honor you. They're there to honor a man who stood up in his hour of great tragedy. Not for his own sake, but for the sake of an entire city. Now, are you going to let them down, J.R.? Are you going to let your daughter die in vain? They're waiting for you out there, J.R. Well, Mr. Ridley? I have no right to stand in the way of my friends, the people here in Virginia City. Like I say, J.R., 
I like your ideas fine. You talk to me any time. The door's always open. What happened in there? Oh, Adam, it was horrible. It's as if my father has no mind of his own. Well, I'll change his mind. No, Adam. Let me do it. I can make him understand that he's got to tell the truth. All right, if you think you can. Remember, Amanda, Jimmy Chang's life depends on your father telling the truth. I realize that now, Adam. Come along, Amanda. Just where do you think you're going, Cartwright? Now, why don't you leave those folks alone? Cartwright here seemed to be in a hurry. We figured he was planning to pester the Ridleys some more. Well, you boys put those guns away. Jesse, you know we're not men of violence. You go right ahead, Mr. Cartwright. Just do whatever you like. I'll do just exactly that, Mr. Bowman. You sure you don't want me to stop him, boss? Well, why should you do that, Jesse? Just when we got things right where we want them. Well, Joe, do you ever taste anything like these jailhouse beans? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm trying not to remember it. What you mean to say is you, you don't ever remember tasting anything as good, don't you? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's almost worth breaking a law to get this kind of chow. Jimmy, you ain't eat a bite of yours. Why don't you try to get some of that down? Thanks, Hoss, but I'm not hungry. Hungry? What's that got to do with it? You think the only time a man can eat when he's hungry? Yeah, you haven't got any kind of fool idea like that, do you, Jimmy? I didn't kill Sally. You believe me, don't you, Hoss? Jimmy, you ought, you ought to have more sense than even ask such a question. But there are some people in this town who think I did. How can they, Hoss? Jimmy, don't you worry none. You got lots of friends in this town. Friends that aren't going to let you down. Here he comes. Let him in. I really thought they tried to stop you from getting you back in here. Well, Fulm was so sure of himself, he figured he didn't have to. Well, what about Amanda? Did you find out anything from her? Oh, I sure did. Anyway, I've convinced her she should tell the truth. And I thought we had Ridley convinced, and then we got over to Fulmer's, and... I don't know, Fulmer's got some strange kind of hold on the man. He's... It's like so much clay in his hands. Anyway, Amanda's still working on him. What, well, do you think she'll get anywhere with him? Well, if she doesn't, we've got a lynch mob on our hands. Father, how can I make you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm on the side of right. Right. You're just doing what Andy Fulmer wants you to do. That boy's gonna die. Your sister died too, didn't she? Yes, she did. Until now, I, I don't believe I really cared. But now I know you don't care. How dare you speak like that to me? I dare speak like that because it's the truth. Your sister brought disgrace on us. And it isn't really Jimmy Chang you're trying to punish, is it? You're trying to punish Sally. Father. Was her death really an accident? Or did you pull that trigger on purpose? Is that why you're afraid to talk? Amanda, as God is my witness, it was an accident. Then go out there and tell them. Oh, Father, we both lied to ourselves. We never really believed the things we said about Sally. And if we let Jimmy Chang die, we'll really be condemning Sally. You and I, Father, we're the guilty ones. Now, boys, you all know where I stand. I'm just interested in doing what's right for our city. Are we going to let those Cartwrights stand between us and what we know is right? 
I say let's rush him and get him out of that jail. Come on. Huh? Here they come. Let's put a few shots over their heads. That should scatter them. She Stop. convinced him. Stop. Stop it, everybody! Stop! Get in here, J.R. Those Cartwrights will kill you. It isn't the Cartwrights this town needs to fear, Fulmer. Ah, J.R., we understand each other. That won't work again, Andy. I'm going to tell Sheriff Halstead the truth. Now, we've been through this before. I'm going to tell him the truth. Get him. Why did you kill him? What? What are you saying? You, you told me to kill him. Murderer. You filthy murderer. Get him! Oh. He just killed my best friend! Jesse, stop the gun. Father! Father! My father wanted to tell you something. I know what it was, because I was part of it. We lied on the witness stand this morning. My sister's death was an accident. Jimmy Chang didn't have any gun. My father killed Sally. That's what he wanted to tell you. Well, Fulmer, three dead. You satisfied? You trying to make a murderer out of me, Ben? You try to murder this town. You still want this man for your mayor? No. Oh, hold on, wait a minute, folks. Hold it, hold it. Uh, this is a this is a terrible thing that's happened here today. And we sure don't want anything like that to happen here again. Uh, folks, folks, listen, you know how I stand, what I believe in. I want my fight for Virginia City. I'm afraid you're at liberty, Mr. Chang. Come on, Jimmy, didn't you hear him? Or don't tell me you done got to where you like it in here. But, but what? But what? I thought you were the one who had the fine ideas about going to college. Yes, I do, but... Well, if you're gonna go to college, Jimmy, you gotta bust out of this jail before you can start. It's all right, Jimmy. Come on. You can go home. It's all over now. Go on. 